Thank you, appreciate that. Have a great rest of your day. All right, so I just went to the grocery store and I'm making a little bit of like a fajita taco situation. It cost me $41. Are you kidding me? $41.56. I am a little bit blown away, a little bit irked, fuming a bit right now. I'm not even using meat, I'm just using like an impossible meat and it was even on sale only $9.99. I literally, I like, I got some sour cream, I got some salsa, red onion, tomatoes, some corn. I don't know about you, but cooking for just one person or just buying groceries in general right now, it's getting really expensive. <laughs> not happy about this. I need to get back home. Alrighty, back in the garden here. Birds are chirping above head and the sun is just peeking through the clouds over there. And so normally I've got you know, a bit of a script that I like to go off of to keep things a little bit more focused. But for this video, I don't have any of that. So I'm coming to you unscripted, no idea kind of where this video or this series of videos is going to go. And so to provide a little bit of background context to the first little video from leaving the grocery store there, every year I like to set an environmental goal so that I'm kind of reducing my impact on the environment and then I compound them each year so a couple of years ago that was to stop using disposable coffee cups and what that meant was that if I didn't bring my personal coffee cup um, that I didn't get to have a coffee that day next year it was no more plastic grocery bags and so what that meant if I didn't bring that was that I would have to like take off my sweater or my jacket turn it into some form of a little bag in order to get my groceries over to my car or just absolutely struggle and be dropping things all over the place which has also happened and I've continued to compound them since then and as I was getting towards 2022 I was starting to think more and more about how do I source more stuff locally so that I'm not necessarily needing food that's being shipped halfway across the world to a grocery store here in Squamish um, in order to be feeding myself and that then snowballed into okay you know, I could do, I could definitely get stuff from local farms, farmers markets, local farmers, etc. cetera. Um, but what about actually, could I eat from my garden every day of the year? And that got me like really, really curious and really, really fascinated because it's, you know, as local and as sustainable as it gets. Um, but it's also going to be a really great kind of like challenge on how can I upskill myself as a gardener. And so I figured, hey, let's do it and let's see where it goes. And I want to bring you along on that adventure. So I don't know what um, is going to unfold over the course of the coming year here. And just kind of to clarify, I want to start this challenge. The first day of eating from the garden every day of the year is going to be July 1st of 2022, all the way through to June 30th or 31st, 2023. And I want to bring you along for that kind of journey. And I don't know what the, you know, kind of like roadblocks are that I'm going to hit along the way. Um, I'm already like the biggest one in my head that's standing out is like, what do I do when I go on vacation, right? Am I drying things, dehydrating things from the garden? I don't know. Those are gonna be things that we're gonna figure out over the course of the year. And so for today and for right now, it is early February. And so it's a little bit too early to be even starting seeds or anything along those lines, which makes it the perfect time to be building out my garden plan for the season ahead. And so with that goal in mind, what I wanna do next is actually draw out my space and start planning out what crops am I gonna be growing for the season. So let's head inside to print that out. All right, so first things first, gonna print out our garden planning guide because it has some graph paper in there. Question becomes, how do I print it in black and white? I'm gonna need a bigger piece of graph paper than that. Now we're cooking. All right, let's get to garden planning here. So the first thing I wanna do is draw out all of my beds and gardening space so that I can then start putting in the vegetables that I want to grow for this coming season, but also that I think will kind of last for a longer stretch of time so that I can be eating from the garden every day of the year. And so now what I'm thinking is I'm actually gonna take the camera outside so you can see exactly which parts of the garden I'm putting in first. All right, so to give you the lay of the land here, I've got four raised beds go right down the middle. So I'm gonna get those popped into the drawing. And then as we come towards the front of my yard here, there's this raised bed here, which is an eight by eight, but I'm actually gonna be taking that out 
to a degree and putting in a grow tent there that's going to be about six and a half feet, seven feet by 11 feet in length. And when we look out here, you know, what we can see is that this is all open space down here that we can be planting in this coming year. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with it just yet, but that all is available space. This is a nice little kind of like flower box that I've got on this side here. And so once you go past where the grow tent will be, back on this side over here is where I've built in a flowing garden that just kind of weaves and wanders its way on the back and then it reconnects on the far side there. And it's going to be through this area here where I end up having my barefoot path as well, which I want to take into account on the plan here. All right, so there's still a pretty good amount of white space because I cleared out a lot of grass last year. So the only thing that I'm gonna add in right now are two more raised beds that are gonna go in that same line of raised beds that I have. Next thing that I wanna do is I'm going to add in all the crops that I already have growing out there in the garden or that are perennials. I have my garlic taking up all of this bed. And then down towards the bottom here, this is where I have my raspberries. Blueberries are over here, and then my rhubarb. And then right next door to that, we've got our strawberry cage, which is pretty large. Woo! Okay, so less than an hour in, and I'm definitely having my first kind of moment of overwhelm with this project because, um, you know, I'm looking at it, it's a lot of vegetables, it's a lot of garden space, it's a lot of new garden space that I need to kind of like develop and establish this year. So there's just a lot going on right now. Um, what I am going to do, I took a couple moments just to think about it, and what I'm gonna do is for today's video, I'm gonna place the vegetables into the garden space in a very similar area or location to what I did last year. And then over the coming weeks, what I'm going to do is give myself kind of permission to adjust, refine, and tweak this plan specifically around kind of like companion slash nemesis plants. So I wanna double check to make sure that I don't have any plants that are right beside something that they won't grow well with. Perfect. Tomatoes are in. Next are going to be my peppers. Those are going right next door. Both of these beds get great sun, which is why I'm putting my tomatoes and peppers in there. This herb box is already established. All right, next bed over. This is where I'm going to do kale. And I'm gonna do kale again for this whole row. And then I'm gonna do Swiss chard here and arugula. Last year I had my arugula right here, so I'm just gonna move it over one bed. The next area that I know performed really well that I wanna do again is my basil. This could be, I could be having a lot of pesto this coming year. <laughs> and so I got my broccoli going in back here, and reason being is that this bed does not get as much sun, so I'm just going to fill that up with some brassicas. And so one that's gonna be kind of interesting to do here is that right up alongside the fence, that's where I'm gonna put my squash and I'm gonna let them run down the hill here. Okay, now on the back wall here, this is where I'm going to put my peas so that they can crawl up alongside the fence there. And then what I think I'm going to do in front of them is I'm gonna do my cukes in here so that I can trellis them. And then I'm gonna do my zooks at the front so that they can kind of slide into the pathway there. And so for the time being, what I'm going to do with these two beds here is I'm gonna put potatoes at the back. And then on this bed, I'm gonna do my onions. And over here, I'm also going to do onions. Whoop, just lost my light. Okay, so I've got all the vegetables that I love to grow that I want to have into the garden, except for one, which we're going to chat about in just a moment. And then on top of that, there's two other kind of like observations that I want to share or make, um, I guess before we wrap up, just that I've kind of noticed over the course of this first session here. So one vegetable that I have not yet put into the garden is asparagus. Reason behind that is because I'm gonna buy them as crowns. They're perennial, so they then grow back each season. So I want to make sure that I find the perfect place for them, and that could mean that I should shift a couple of things around so that they get that perfect, perfect home. Second piece is that I don't have anything in the grow tent yet. And the reason why is because I wanna use that primarily as an experimentation space. And so I'll probably have some tomatoes in there, some peppers in there, but I'm not really looking at it so much as like a maximizing yield place, rather an experimentation zone, something that I can learn from. And so I don't wanna define anything for it just yet. And the third and final piece is that I really want to keep some space set aside for pollinators. And so I haven't put any flowers in here just 
just yet. I'm gonna need some help on that one because I don't know too much about flowers and what would be going best where. So I'll be kind of calling on the brain trust of the community for that one. And so with that being said, I feel pretty good about where we're at here, especially just kind of for today. And I think it's the right place to kind of wrap up this first episode because what I'm feeling called to do next is a bit of like a second pass on this plan to make sure that the vegetables that I have placed in there are in the best position and with plants that they're going to grow well with. And this is a bit like, I guess, daunting or unnerving for me to share because like, that's not stuff that I've had to look super deeply into in past seasons. I've had the luxury of space. And so I really wanna make sure that I'm using this space as effectively as possible and setting the plants up to thrive. So if you see anything where it's like, oh, you shouldn't plant those two together, let me know because ultimately you're just going to be saving me a whole bunch of time. And so where do things go from here? I got no clue. But if I were to hypothesize, my guess is that the next video in this playlist is going to be kind of like an updated version of this plan and then starting to nail down the seeds that I need in order to start bringing this to life. So that's all that I wanted to cover off on for right now. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I think this is going to be a whole lot of fun and definitely a big adventure with lots of highs and lows along the way. Would love to hear what you think. That's everything that I wanted to cover off on for right now though. So I'll catch you on the next video and see you soon.